Waiting for the Barbarians is the latest film from Kiro Guerra, director of Embrace of the Serpent and Birds of Passage. I've seen Birds of Passage and I really liked it, so it piqued my interest to see what the director could do with this far more mainstream cast of Mark Rylance, Johnny Depp and Robert Pattinson. The movie was released in 2019 or 2020, I guess it depends on where you live because the COVID-19 pandemic has thrown movie release dates out of whack. It follows a magistrate played by Rylance, who works at some far distant outpost in an unnamed land. With certain things that happen in the film, I would guess it was somewhere where the Middle East meets the Far East, Tajikistan or Tajikistan or somewhere along there, but it's never specified and ultimately unimportant. The magistrate is a pretty chill character and seems like a nice guy and has things running smoothly. A policeman sent from the Empire's capital, Colonel Joel, played by Johnny Depp, arrives to the outpost as he has been sent to investigate rumours that an attack is being mounted by a group simply referred to as the Barbarians. Many nomads, village people and farmers, are captured by Joel and brought into the outpost for questioning as to the location and plans of the Barbarians. These questionings involve extreme torture, sometimes even death, until Joel gets the answers he was looking for to build the narrative that an attack is coming, so that reinforcements can arrive and Joel can build an attack of his own against the mysterious and enigmatic barbarians. Once the Empire officials get what they need, they leave, ominously suggesting they'll be back. The magistrate is horrified by the abuse he witnesses, but tries his best to ignore it, knowing he's outranked and powerless against the Empire's officials, but the abuse lands on his doorstep in the form of a woman who was blinded by Joel's torturers and had her ankles broken and her father murdered. The magistrate takes pity on her and tends to her wounds. She sleeps in his bed, eats from his household and is given work. It's like he's trying to get forgiveness or redemption for doing nothing to stop the torture. The magistrate can see, though, that she's still unhappy, so decides to accept her wish of going back to her people, so he sets off with a small team to deliver her back. Once this is done and he returns, he finds the Empire's officers in the frontier, and he's in big trouble, as he's accused of communicating with the enemy. One of the interesting things about Waiting for the Barbarians is the lack of references as to where exactly this place is. They never mention it. And I guess it's because the themes of the film and the messages it gives are universal. It's never location-based or time-specific things Guerra wants to focus on, because the barbarianism the film director wants to explore is repeated throughout history. You could place the story during the British colonial period, the American Vietnam War, the Congo, the American Iraq invasion, the French colonisation of Algeria. You could even link it quite on the nose to the modern-day refugee crisis with countries like the UK and the US bombing the hell out of villages and farmers in peaceful Middle Eastern countries, making them refugees, and then those same countries having the cheek to be pissed off that these people trying to escape war and conflict cross borders and seas to become refugees. Also, these imperialist countries fear that the countries they bombed will take revenge in the form of what we call terrorism, which does end up happening. So the countries that started the problem decide that the solution is even more bombing. I mean, in a way, that sums up the plot of Waiting for the Barbarians. It doesn't really matter what specific conflict the movie is about, because the anti-imperialist themes and allegories are at the forefront of the movie. They're so blatant and on the nose, it's not trying to hide it at all. There's even a scene, if I remember correctly, where the magistrate screams at the colonel, You're the barbarians! I did enjoy the thematic elements of Waiting for the Barbarians. There's going to be juvenile kids who can't comprehend life out of their little political American bubble of the Republican versus liberal spectrum, who are going to be farming at the mouth calling the movie liberal propaganda or political correctness. But the movie is concerning itself with something much larger than the silly tribal back and forth between Republicans and liberals. In spite of how blatant the messages of Waiting for the Barbarians are, there's depth to them. For example, there's one scene that I found really interesting, where the magistrate is informed by someone, after he gives back the woman, that she didn't like being with him, and that he made her feel bad, even worse than the actual abusers. 
You can't work out why that is, but I feel this perhaps might be referencing the victimization of the young girl, which is still a showcase of power. It's still the magistrate saying, I am the powerful one and you're the victim, as Rylance mentioned in an interview. And that's pretty much anti-political correctness, because it's almost like the film is attacking the white saviour trope. The movie not being part of an actual conflict can work against it though, and looking at reviews of the film, it seems Guerra's choice has backfired. The thing is, if you don't attach your messages to an actual real-world issue, past or present, it lessens the impact and makes it look like the movie is some kind of community service video where the message is, hurting people is bad guys, let's not do it. Movies are more powerful when the events depicted have an element of truth to them, as Guerra's Birds of Passage did, which is one of the reasons why I found it so powerful, because I knew it was more or less a true story. When you take this little story concerned with colonialism in Waiting for the Barbarians, but you just kind of say, yeah, it doesn't matter what particular story, colony or country this is, being a prick no matter where you are is bad, so let's not do it guys. Yeah, I mean that's true, but it doesn't necessarily make your film more impactful. I can see what they were trying to do, in that they weren't trying to limit their themes by sticking to a particular conflict, but I feel this will lessen the effect for many people watching. Also, whilst a film like Birds of Passage has certain themes it wishes to tackle, it also has an interesting story. Barbarians on the other hand is a very slow burn movie and quite boring during some parts. It starts to really pick up towards the end and I wish it was about a half an hour longer so that some of the stuff in the last hour could have been expanded on, but ultimately the movie could have done what it did in a much more entertaining way. The music is nice, the cinematography with deserts and mountains is absolutely majestic, Rylance is excellent and Depp and Patterson are fun to watch even though they aren't in the movie that much. But I can't help but feel there could have been more to the film. It could have had more oomph, more meat, more story. Like for example, there's a scene early on where the magistrate is washing the woman's feet and it is such a slow scene and goes on for so long that even the magistrate falls asleep. I think the only one who was alert and giddy watching this scene was Quentin Tarantino. The second act is the problem, I think, and lets the side down. The beginning is interesting, with Johnny Depp's arrival and him and the magistrate having a little ideological duel, and then of course the tortures and the magistrate's horror in response. When the magistrate returns to the frontier after his journey, the subsequent parts, all the way up to the thought-provoking final shot of the film, are the best parts of the movie. It's just that section in the middle which is kind of overlong and plods its way along. So many films that come out these days are seemingly without purpose. You watch it and then think, what was the point? This is definitely not one of those films. It's a mature movie, an intelligent one. The purpose is well defined and clear. It tackles a subject that many people would prefer not remembering even happened, as alluded to by a line where Johnny Depp says something like, we're on the outskirts of nowhere here. No one cares or will remember what happens here. The movie almost feels like a message to would-be conquerors and imperialists. It's like it's saying that in spite of material power and cruelty, human spirit will always endure. Every empire that has existed in history at some point ended and crumbled, and the same fate awaits the empires of today, exercising their unchecked cruelty on innocence. It's a step down from Birds of Passage, but still a decent film. I give it a 7 out of 10.